Now, in the wake of the disastrous 2016 election, where uh, not only did Hillary Clinton lose against Donald Trump, but also the Democrats faced losses all across the country. Uh, and during the Obama years of over a thousand seats, the DNC is facing a, a big, big problem. They're running out of money. According to Politico, many donors are now refusing to write checks. And on the ground, operatives worry that they do not have the resources to build the infrastructure they need to compete effectively in next year's midterms and the run-up to 2020. Now, what's interesting about this is while the DNC is not getting a lot of money, the individual candidates actually are. Individual candidates are facing record hauls. But as far as them giving to the DNC, no. The people, uh, people uh, donors large and small are... Uh, according to Jane Klebe, who is ne Nebraska party chair, quote, are so over the party. <laughs> and look, I can understand why. How do you support a party establishment that has shown so much resistance to actual change? And their, their whole refusal to address the reasons why they lost so many seats, again, not, during, uh, not just during the Obama years, but in 2016 as well. I mean, you can't just polish up a turd and expect everyone to embrace it, especially the small donors. What you need is you need real change. And unfortunately, uh, Tom Perez was installed as a bulwark against that change. And even more, unfortunately, there's people still in the DNC that don't understand, that just don't get it. One told Politico that the DNC reboot under, Perpet, uh, under Perez has taken longer than anticipated, in part because of the sheer scale of the undertaking. That is said of uh, a, a range of party operatives, donors, and elected officials. They also say it's a very legitimate concern, not being able to raise money. Interesting. Um, now, speaking of infrastructure, right? Well, we recently just had a purge of Bernie Sanders people from the DNC who are actually going to help you to be able to do that. Not only did they purge uh, Bernie people from the DNC, they also appointed Hillary Clinton people to positions of power, especially when it comes to managing the money. And speaking of the money, let's talk about that. Quote, the financial challenges reflect a greater struggle at a committee led by the chairman who is new to party politics. Oh, he's new. So, so then why did you put him there? <laughs> why appoint him if he's so new and doesn't know what he's doing? Maybe they should have picked Keith Ellison, who was also running. But anyway, they continue. And on a steep learning curve at a time when national Democrats are still searching for an identity after a historic loss. And it's not just donors who are staying away as the Perez-led group promises an expansive new set of new investments and innovations. The party's old leaders, led by former President Barack Obama, have kept their involvement to a minimum as well. Again, that's actually not true. Tom Perez is Obama's guy. Obama's like, get, get this guy in there. We've got to stop Keith Ellison. We've got to stop the Bernie people. We have to make sure the establishment remains in charge of the DNC. So, so get in there, Tom. Get in there, Tom. No, President Barack Obama was definitely involved in the DNC. But later on, they're going to go on and blame Obama by saying, well, he, he hasn't helped us raise enough money. He hasn't been doing these DNC events like we, like we used to. Because he was the big star that they would always trot out to raise money. But anyway, uh, the whole point of Perez, and I've said it before, is to stop progressives from actually gaining a foothold into the party. And now, like I said, with the uh, purging of Bernie Sanders people, their mission is pretty much complete. Now, on the money, how much do they have? Well, in the beginning of October, the DNC had just $7 million in its main account, which is only there to cover its central responsibilities and salaries. I wonder if that goes, uh, if that counts the paid consultants too, that did such a wonderful, wonderful job in 2016, as well as some of the special elections like the Ossoff race in Georgia. Hmm. Now, Alice German, former secretary for the committee says, quote, we're all aware the money is not flowing in the way that we'd hoped. And look, why would it, right? The DNC has shown an uncanny ability to flush millions and millions of dollars down the toilet. Hillary Clinton, for example, outraised Trump two to one and still lost. But you know what? Those consultants still got paid. 
they get paid win or lose, and they're still a massive part of the party. Some of the people that replaced the Bernie people uh, were paid lobbyists and consultants. That's not an accident. That's not an accident. That's exactly who they want to put in because that's exactly who continue to get paid. Now, don't, now, Perez is still out there attempting to tap rich donors. Now, Perez recently hit fundraising spots like Martha's Vineyard this summer and swung through San Francisco and Seattle in recent weeks, according to Democrats familiar with the events. Perez is also visiting secondary money destinations, including a, pan, a planned stop in North Carolina later this month. Because again, well, we've got to go and try to beg rich donors for money because we're not getting any sort of donations anywhere else. We're not getting it from the small donors. We're not getting it from the medium donors. We've got to beg the rich donors. Please help us out. We're so broke. Well, how has he been uh, greeted? By these rich donors. Party officials involved in fundraising say donors repeatedly turn them away with a try again next year, especially since it became clear that there won't be an official party autopsy from 2016. No party autopsy. No, that's funny because uh, when the Republicans lost in 2012, they came out with a, an incredibly scathing party autopsy of their own party. Hey, they said that we, we need to go and appeal to Latinos. You know, we're being, uh, we can't rely on just white so-called working class people. Uh, what we need is we need to expand the party. This is what we did wrong. Now, did we see that from the Democrats? No. The closest thing is Hillary Clinton going out there and saying, eh, Bernie Russia. It's Bernie Sanders slash Russia. Uh, that, that apparently seems to be their official, unofficial uh, party autopsy, which is complete bull. No, we're never going to get an actual party autopsy because the Democrats can't admit that they actually did anything wrong during the election. Uh, progressives were like, no, you should go, you should go left. That's where the mood of the country is. We are uh, in a very populist mood. We're very angry at the establishment. Go that way. Hey, we have a candidate that embodies that right now in Bernie Sanders. And Democrats and the super delegates are like, nah, yeah, yeah, we'll take, we'll take that under advisement. <laughs> oh God, we lost to Donald Trump. How did that happen? No, it must have been the Bernie bros and it must have been Russia. Uh, that's it. That's their answer. It, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Not only that, but they also say that uh, as far as the donors are saying, that Democrat John Ossoff's loss in his much hype special congressional election in Atlanta suburbs also depressed donor enthusiasm. So now they talk to actual donors and, and they're uh, getting a, a sense of what they think. Uh, now, Northern California attorney Guy Saperstein, part owner of the Oakland A's and a prominent funder of progressive causes and candidates, says, quote, I made it pretty clear that I don't want to donate to the DNC, DCCC, or the Senate counterpart, so they have not called me. He also says you can't just go in, uh, you can't just go to donors and say, uh, support me, I'm the DNC. You have to rebuild the credibility, and that's according to a longtime Democratic donor and DNC member. Now, that, of course, is going to be really, really hard because in order to, cred to rebuild credibility, you have to have trust. Now, in order to actually do that, you have to first admit that you made a mistake and that you actually want to change. Recent actions in the DNC show that, no, they don't want to change. Nobody trusts the DNC because of what they did under Debbie Wasserman Schultz. She and the party overwhelmingly favored Hillary Clinton, uh, and in doing so, they actually slanted the primaries towards Hillary Clinton. They scheduled the debates in Clinton's favor, as few debates as possible, fewer than the year than the, than the primary before, and at weird, weird times. And not only that, but she worked with a local party chairman to do voter suppression in certain states to keep what I think is a lot of Bernie supporters out of the primaries. Not only that, but there's other examples of corruption. Donna Brazil passed off questions to the DNC while she was working as a contributor to CNN. And she got fired for it. And now, oh, guess what? She's in one of the committees on the DNC and a very powerful one at that. Hmm. They had a bias. It was very clear that they favored Hillary Clinton 
and did not give a fair primary. And that's why people don't trust you. Nobody trusts that you run a fair primary. Nobody trusts that you run a fair race. The DNC lawsuit showed just how many people feel burned by giving to the DNC. They wanted their money back. And guess what? You have lost those donors to the DNC forever. All that excitement and money for Bernie Sanders pissed away because the, the, the establishment had to have their beloved Hillary run. And look, it's not even about Hillary Clinton per se. What it's about is it's about the corruption of the establishment. All she is is a face of that. And look, this, this is them not wanting to change when it's clear that the American people do want change. They cannot stand the establishment, but instead of changing and embracing the left, the DNC still continues to resist change, and that's what they mean by resistance. They're not resisting Trump. They're resisting change. This is what they get when they rig primaries against popular politicians. This is what they get when they ignore their base. Over 80% of Democrats prefer Bernie Sanders. He is the most popular politician in the country. While the DNC, while Hillary Clinton, while the Democratic Party continue to face massive unfavorable numbers, even in the wake of Donald Trump being the, one of the most unpopular presidents in the history, in modern history. The DNC, if they're ever going to get anything back, has to change, and they have to change now. If not, they're gone as an organization. And you know what? That might not be such a bad thing. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.